thank you, Slujan, for reading the scripture uh, for us. And as you have already seen, the title of my message today is Christian Spiritual Life. And uh, you might be thinking, you can simply call it spiritual life, but why are you making it too long and calling it Christian Spiritual Life? And the reason I titled my message as Christian Spiritual Life is because there are so many kinds of perspectives, so many varieties and perspectives of spiritual life. And... Uh, which are not Christian. As Christians, it is our duty and we are we, we ought to have our perspective based on the scripture and the teachings of Christ. So uh, my job today is uh, to present you the Christian perspective of spiritual life. I ask the question, I ask the question, uh, are you spiritual or do you have a spiritual life? And uh, uh, if you have, what are the dynamic? What is the what are the dynamics of your spiritual? I ask this question to many people. I ask some some people even in our church. The majority of them answered, saying, "I'm not very spiritual, but only to an extent I'm spiritual." They're very uncomfortable to say that they are spiritual, and sometimes they are finding it very difficult to explain how their spiritual life is. Since they are not in a position to explain how their spiritual life is, they feel they are not spiritual. And in fact, the truth is, people are confused about spiritual life. What is spiritual life? That's what they are confused about. So today in my message, I would like to deal with, uh, deal with this particular subject. What is Christian spiritual life? And uh, let me uh share a disclaimer that is i do not have any conclusions for my message today but my goal is to help you understand the christian perspective of spiritual life so that you may be uh, aware and you may you may be able to uh, refute of refute the deceiving and faulty concepts and practices uh, that are coming into christianity as i said people are confused about what spiritual life is And there is no proper definition to explain what spiritual life is and which is agreed by all people. And for some people, it is a moral and ethical life. And for some people, it is a religious rituals that they do. They consider it as their spiritual life. And for some people, these are the religious disciplines like reading the script of Bible and praying and go attending the church and doing evangelism. And uh, for, some, for, some, for some people, it is living uh, absolutely moral life. And for some, it is a mystical experience. They just think about God and experience the joy or they experience, uh, 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 you know, a kind of uh, satisfaction within them and we, within their minds psychologically. So for some, uh, spiritual life is more. Uh, mystical. It is filled with visions, dreams, these and that and whatnot. Uh, they speak about which uh, may not be having proper uh, roots and which may not be having proper proofs from the scripture or uh, uh, from multiple people's experiences. But there is a traditional uh, definition which is, now, of course, it is, as I told, there is no definition that has been accepted by all, but there is a traditional uh, definition for spirituality or spiritual life. That is, traditionally, spirituality is a religious process of reformation that focuses to attain the original shape of human and to live according to the purpose of life. So all the spiritual life is uh, working towards bringing people back uh, to the true image that God has created or to the true human self, whatever is there, to bring them back to that self, to bring them back to the experience of true human life uh, is the goal of uh, this spiritual life. That is a classic uh, classic example, a classic definition of uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual life. But the meaning of spiritual life and spirituality has changed over a period of time. And uh, if you read Bible, you don't find anywhere any definitions or any explicit uh, you know, discussions and teachings about spiritual life. And you would be surprised to see that. Think about from Genesis till Revelation. Can you find anywhere somebody is sitting and meditating about God and his word and some kind of spiritual thing? 
uh, but you don't find any of those. That does not mean there is no spiritual life in, in the Bible at all. The understanding of spiritual life has developed over a period of time in the Bible also. And uh, why am I saying that there is no explicit, explicit teachings or explicit exp expressions of uh, spiritual life in the Bible? You will understand that as we are uh, continuing in our message in the later part, you will be able to understand. But in the fifth century onwards, the spiritual life got special focus. And uh, in the early church, which is in the fifth century, uh, spiritual life, uh, they used to refer it to a life oriented towards the Holy Spirit or a life that is oriented towards the life of God. And later it's explained as moral and ethical life. Uh, uh, you, whatever I spoke previous, I told you before, some, for some people, they feel it as uh, spiritual life is moral and ethical life. It is because from this point of time, uh, it is in, during the middle ages only, they, this perspective has developed. Spiritual life is about living morally and holy and obeying all the commandments in the Bible and living ethical life, helping people. And some, uh, some people, they do, they want to live completely free from sin or they want to be completely free from immorality and uh, uh, this uh, uh, life that is corrupted. So what they did was they separated themselves and when they built some caves and they lived in the caves, they renounced everything they have because wealth is evil. If you have wealth, you will do all sorts of sins. So wealth is evil. They left everything that they have and they want to live in the monasteries. They are called the first monasteries are not the buildings and the societies that we are seeing around uh, these days. And uh, but the first monasteries were like a priest, which are uh, who are uh, the Christian pre uh, Christian evangelists and the priest in the uh, early church. They left everything they have and they built uh, on top of a hill. They built some caves. And they live there so that they can be free from all this sin. And they where they will be praying and they will be meditating on the scripture. That's what they considered as uh, spiritual life. After that, in the Middle Age, Middle Age, the spiritual spirituality was given a social and a psychological meaning. And socially, what it means is uh, in this Middle Ages, um, they considered the spiritual thing is something. It is about the priests. Just like today in the church, many people consider evangelism belongs to pastors. Uh, the members don't have anything to do with that. So we are paying you salaries. You pastors go out and you, uh, you share the gospel, you evangelize and bring people to the church. That's what many people are thinking today. And similarly, in the Middle Ages, people thought the spirituality is something that is for the priests. The priests are the people who have to uh, dedicate themselves and sit in their room or in the caves uh, and continuously praying and reading the scripture. And that's only they will be doing. Even today is the funniest thing I'm telling you, even in the, in the Telugu Christian world, uh, when somebody calls, because I get similar calls, when somebody call and say, hello, brother, are you uh, are you free? I'm so sorry. I might have disturbed you. You must be praying, right? I'm telling you the truth. You know what? We won't be praying 24 hours. Okay, we are into ministry. We are priests. That does not mean we will be praying 24 hours and reading the scripture 24 hours. Okay, but this, there is a perspective in people's mind that priests and pastors will be praying 24 hours and they will be reading the scripture because they are called to do that. That is what spiritual life is. And in the Middle Ages, they thought spiritual life is only for these people because they will be always focused on these things. They will be spiritual. We are not doing it. So we are not spiritual. And they brought some kind of division in the society. Uh, it is not fighting against each other, but there is a kind of distinction has been, the distinction has been brought. The church, church and church service against material position. If you are in church and church service, that is great. That is more high and respectable and a spiritual life and spiritual thing and material thing. All these things are bad. Okay. This kind of perspective, sacred and secular. This division has come. Of course, I'm into ministry. I have to respect my profession and what I'm about my life. Uh, of course, doing the work of the Lord is a very great and respectful uh, work. But this division has come because of this. And they brought division between, uh, between like uh, divisions like church against secular authorities. Okay. And the priestly class against the secular class. 
you know you can see them clearly even when you uh, observe uh, you can observe this clearly even in some episcopal churches today episcopal churches who have a hierarchy of leadership and all and uh, uh, you can find the similar thing these are spiritual and all others are not spiritual and psychologically it was explained as the inner life spiritual life is about the inner life the purity of motives it is about the affections we have it is about the intentions we have it is the analysis of the feelings and it it, it includes mental aspects of life and from the time of renations which means from the time of 14th 15th century it uh, it became a matter of mind spiritual life means something it is psychological and mental it it, it works that say that inside of a person and previously it was religious activities then it is about religious disciplines and it it was separately dedicated to a particular community of people and now it became for everyone everybody is spiritual now but it is a mental aspect it's something inside only it is not something that comes out and uh, and during the reformation it has completely has taken another turn called mysticism mysticism is invading christian spirituality and in the modern understanding of uh, spirituality we have brought so much of uh, so much idea of ideas from other uh, religions and other philosophies and especially uh, christianity uh, adopted we say or uh, christianity absorbed we need to say or uh, other philosophical re religious beliefs have Oh, taken over Christianity, especially the Indi uh, Indian, uh, sorry, Asian religions, especially Indian. And uh, a, uh, a philosopher come theologian, Hortman, he says, uh, modern spirituality is a blend of humanistic psychology, mystical and occult traditions and Eastern religions. Just think about the Christian understand the spiritual life that we are thinking about today. It looks more like the mixture of these three. It's something psychological, and man is the center, and it is because it has become mystical, which we are seeing so much uh, in the experienced-based Christian sex, sex or okay, CCTS, uh, and occult traditions and Eastern religious perspectives have come. Don't you think is it's happening around us? And modern spirituality tend to refer to a subjective experience of a sacred dimension and the deepest value and meaning by which people live. Even today, Christians also are thinking about spirituality. It's more about the subjective experience. If you don't have experience, you don't have that uh, spiritual life. Unless you experience speaking in tongues, you are not spiritual. Unless you experience some kind of shaking as you are prayed or you know anointed, you are not spiritual. Unless you are experiencing spiritual gifts, you are not spiritual. And for some people, unless you connected, who am I? I need to connect, to the, find the deepest meaning of my life, and I need to connect. Who am I? I need, uh, I need to understand that, and and uh, I need to understand the purpose of my life deep within me. Uh, then only I am spiritual. That's what many people think. And when people sharing the testimony is saying like, I want to find the TV, um, uh, who, find who am I and my, the, the you know, a purpose of my life, we, we feel, oh, this man is so spiritual from the beginning and he is always focused. And we are focused on our jobs, earning money and fashion, uh, people, family and all this. But these people are really great. They're focused on finding who they are and philosophical and say, spiritual. There is nothing wrong in finding the meaningful meaning of life and uh, uh, you know, finding who we are, but that is not spiritual life. That is, uh, if not, uh, that is not a Christian perspective of spiritual life. All philosophical people have the same thoughts. And uh, spirituality became a belief in a supernatural realm, beyond known and observable. And it, it, don't you feel, uh, don't you find this in the churches, 
uh, people think that spirituality is about uh, finding some, experiencing something supernatural, maybe some gold dust to you know fall on you as you pray. In Hyderabad, people in Hyderabad can relate to it. There are lots of groups who teach this. You know, as you pray, gold dust will be on you. As you pray, uh, some kind of light has to come and some kind of vibration. And I'm surprised to uh, see people are be believing and educated people are going after this. Something supernatural should happen. And there is a quest for the ultimate and sacred meaning of life. Or uh, they want to experience a total bliss. If you're praying and then you feel, uh, I felt peace in my heart, brother. I prayed, I felt peace in my heart. That is what the spiritual experience they talk about. Okay, or uh, an encounter with one's own inner dimension and the world around us. These are New Age movement uh, invasions into Christianity when these new New Age movement perspectives are coming into the church and uh, they are making us to be fo focused more about ourselves, which I will explain uh, in the coming slides. I mean, uh, in few minutes. I would like to present before you some non uh, some perspectives which are not Christian spirituality. I didn't understand how to title it, how to call them non Christian spirituality or uh, what 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 not. I really did not understand how to uh, title it. So I found some kind of perspectives which are in church. They are not Christian. Okay, number one, matter is evil. Spirit is uh, spirit alone is good. This is the main teaching of Greek philosophy from which we brought a teaching. Fasting is feasting to the spirit. When you fast, you are feasting in the spirit. And you punish the body to attain the spiritual power. Body is nothing, brother. We should not be focusing on the body. We should be focusing on the spirit because spirit alone is very important. If you want to be spiritual, you should be focused on this. And I know I've been in a place where I, I used to feel guilty for not being able to fast for more than one time a day. Like what I meant by skipping more than one meal a day. I find it very difficult. I know I have experienced people came to me and said, uh, are you not fasting? I said, no, I'm not. You know what? If you fast for two days, three days, it's it's very good. You feel really great and all. But I could not connect to it. I feel I used to feel guilty about that. Okay, and uh, I was even given a title. Praveen is someone who who doesn't believe in fastings, and of course I believe in fastings. But uh, if we have an underlying belief uh, in our hearts that the flesh is bad, only spirit is good, and when we suppress and when we trouble the flesh, we can grow spiritually. That is not Christian spiritual belief. That is Greek philosophy. Of course, uh, when we fast and if our focus is on God and when we left all focus from other stuff, definitely they are going to help us become strong spiritually. Punish the body to attain spiritual power. There are people who say you pray. Prayer, prayer is more important uh, than doing some physical work. Okay, uh, that's what uh, they believe. So whatever comes to body, it is not very important, and uh, only spiritual things are important. Leaving all the desires of the body. If you have any desire to buy something, then uh, you don't. Uh, you 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 are not. Uh, spiritual you have to leave all your desires if you feel to eat uh, the delicious food that you like perhaps biryani or something then you are not spiritual okay if you feel to wear a good dress and buy a good car or something you are not spiritual and uh, you know what it's so funny uh you know culture it has become so strong it, it has gone so strong and i was uh, uh you know i was restricted to preach wearing a jeans because you are a priest, you are spiritual. Spiritual people will be wearing white shirt and a formal pant. If you don't wear a white shirt and formal pant, these, and you are wearing other stuff, you are your focus is on the uh, fleshly matters and uh, fashion and these things, and you are not allowed to uh, allowed to preach. <laughs> it it is. Don't you feel it's so very difficult and uncomfortable 
to preach wearing a suit and tie uh, in summer, especially uh, in countries like um, Africa and um, you know south southern parts of India. You know, it is there. If you wear other uh, clothes, no, you are not spiritual. And there is a tradition started in uh, Telugu Christianity also. Uh, pastors and all, they have to wear these kurtas. Then only they look, they look and appear spiritual. And unfortunately, it is not something uh, something different. All other religions in their spirituality, they have their own colors. They, know, they have their own style of uh, dressing. And uh, it's so crazy that we brought it into Christianity also. And pastors have to wear only white shirts and white and white and uh, only formals. Uh, so there are, these are certain things. I'm not against uh, having an order. You know, when you are a servant of God, you are standing. You should present yourself good. I appreciate that. And uh, but spiritual people will wear only white, and this is a wrong belief. And church is important, or your job or exams are important. Have you have you faced this pressure? Your church is important, or your job is important. Sunday, spiritual people have to come to church. These are, these are focused more on their career and life and the world. They are not interested uh, in spiritual things and they are not interested in the church. They are not very strong spiritual Christians. If any, I remember in my childhood, if somebody goes to write exam on Sunday, the other church members used to say, oh, church is important or exams are important. And we, we have our own experiences in our own church. I was not there, but I heard the stories. Uh, people were being restricted from particular uh, certain kinds of jobs and uh, pursuing certain careers and, uh, you know, losing. They, 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 have, they, they lost a lot, actually. They suffered uh, because of this. What is, what is the belief we underline? Oh, we are Christians. We people, for us, church is more important than other stuff. Job exams, studies, all these things are worldly. We need to give for more importance to the spiritual life, going to church and worshipping. And have you heard about this? More prayer, more power, less prayer, less power. This is not a Christian there is a spiritual teaching. You know, our faith and our prayer is not for power. New Age movement teaches you pray, you focus on God, you focus on meditate so that you may experience power and experience more and more as much as you this, uh, this practice, you will become powerful. And Christians are believing that if you pray and more, pray more and more, we feel more powerful. For some reason, I don't know how this prayer power has been connected to prayer. And let me tell you, there is no power in the prayer. And we always talk about prayer, power of prayer, power of prayer, power of prayer. There is no power in the prayer, but there is power in the person who hears and answers the prayer. Our prayer is just we communicating to God, but we speaking for 10 hours a day is not going to make, make us powerful or something powerful. You know, miracle is not going to happen because of our prayer. Miracle is going to happen because of God's grace and his power. He does it. It's not us. And because of that, we start we, 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 with this. Uh, we brought these uh, so-called prayer warriors, and we give special attention to the pastors who pray for more time, uh, and they act as if they have more power. And this is not Christian spirituality. And uh, Bible reading, prayer, and evangelism, these are Christian disciplines. This is not our spirituality. When I asked the people, are you spiritual? They, they, found, it, they found it very difficult to answer, that they, to say that they are spiritual because they judge themselves because I'm not reading my Bible much. I could not read more than two chapters. I feel asleep. I'm not able to pray more than five minutes. Um, my mind goes all over and my thoughts change. So I'm not spiritual. I'm not activate, actively participating in church activities and doing evangelism, so I'm not spiritual. That's where they come to the, such conclusion. Bible reading, prayer, and evangelism, actively participating in church activities, these are spiritual disciplines. Definitely they are going to help us, but that is not the spiritual life. 
and for some people like exercise in spiritual gifts if you exercise spiritual gifts you are spiritual if a miracle happened then this person is very spiritual person and uh, if somebody speaks in tongues he is a spiritual person i am not speaking in tongues he is uh, he is better than me okay and have you have you seen these giving and having energy or good vibes like you know when you pray are you experiencing any good vibes when i pray i i felt the peace in my heart brother these kind of tongues uh, things i'm not against like when we pray definitely after some time definitely god will help us and we will be calmed down we'll experience the peace but this is this is a different kind of vibe i'm talking about these days you feel you find it in experience based christian sex uh that somebody plays their hand upon them and pray and there some kind of vibes and energies will come to the person who will be who was prayed and and it's so crazy some people talk about uh, they touch the right hand and say uh, you tell me how the power passed now from right hand it went to my head from my head to the heart and then it went to my right left hand that's how power passed and i experienced it and i felt it oh then they oh that's great and some people come in and even say i can give you spiritual power and even i can take you take spiritual power from you and these are very strong and you can find everywhere in hyderabad you go in every street you will find somebody okay people who say they can give spiritual gifts and take spiritual gifts also the moment you place your hand vibes comes you shake your uh, jacket hundreds will fall you shake your kerchief tens will fall this is not spirit there is there, this is not spiritual power and this is not spiritual life don't misunderstand these things this is sensationalism that's all don't mistake a mistake this with spiritual life and go after them and be deceived that's my focus of focus of the message uh, today <coughs> and uh, two more things i will present and then we'll uh, go into what is christian perspective you can speak things into existence there is power in your tongue there is energy in you the god is inside of you so there is energy in you there is energy in your words and you speak things into existence you might have heard about this you might have seen this is not christian spiritual life and uh, sharing spiritual energy or have you heard about prophetic installation seminars and spiritual gift installation seminars and all these things are deceiving the god is the one who gives us spiritual gifts and uh, strengthens us there is nobody by 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 laying their hands they are not going to release any and install any gifts and ministry in us and the last thing is people say oh i and my jesus only i'm spiritual brother i have seen all these kind of divisions in the christianity so many denominations so much of confusion i'm not interested in going anywhere i found everywhere uh, uh, people being deceived so i understood the best thing i can do is uh, i i i pray to my jesus i and my jesus are enough i will i won't even come to church on sundays uh, i'm happy with this i'm spiritual but i'm not interested in church you might have heard this statement people say i'm spiritual but not religious i'm spiritual but i'm not interested in church this is also not christian spirituality you may be praying for 10 hours a day or 20 hours a day reading the scripture bible two times a day completely but still if you are not meeting the other brethren and if you are not able to join with them that is not christian spirituality so these are some wrong beliefs and wrong perspectives of uh, spiritual spirituality we are seeing and uh, Uh, let me tell you there is so much of influence of this new age and as well as uh, eastern undividedness perspectives uh, influenced christianity which i could not share because of the life, uh, because of the setup we have today and uh, if you are interested we can have a personal conversation about those i would like to i would like to explain how greek philosophy and uh, eastern undividedness perspectives have influenced christian uh spirituality so uh you please let me know just ping me so that we can have a discussion about those and even if you have any doubts we can discuss about them okay having said that i would like to move into what christian spirituality is 
and I've, there are so many perspectives, but uh, there are three points I would like to focus. Number one, Christian spiritual life is an undivided human life. Christian spiritual life is an undivided human life. And second thing, Christian spiritual life is a participation in the life of God. Christian spiritual life is a part, is participation in the life of God. And number three, Christian spirituality, Christian spiritual life is inclusive. It's not exclusive. Okay, I'm going to explain these three perspectives. Number one, Christian spiritual life is an undivided human life. In the in the beginning, as I said about the uh, the faulty beliefs of spiritual life. I mentioned a lot of things in which one of them is body is evil, spirit alone is important. So you have to suppress your body to become strong spiritually. But spirit is more important. Like we will be addressing those. Okay. If somebody asks you, are you spiritual? We find it, many of us are finding it difficult to say we are spiritual because we always think about so many definitions and perspectives and activities and we get confused. But let me tell you, you are spiritual, not because you are doing any activities or you are believing anything. You are spiritual because primarily because you are a spirit. You are a spirit. That's why you are spiritual. And you are not just a spirit. This is where the, the, I, will, I would like to ask you to be aware. Don't think spirit alone is important. Like, you know, we are spirit, soul and body that's what written in first thessalonians 5 23 now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ we are spirit soul and body and we are interconnected completely with these three aspects of life <coughs> spirit soul and body are so in connected <coughs> and you cannot separate them Separation of these is nothing but death. If you separate spirit and soul from body, what happens? We are dead. Okay. So we cannot separate body and spirit. And so we cannot separate the life. This is a spirit life. This is a body life, physical life. You cannot do that. Our spiritual life and physical life are completely intrinsically together and one. Okay. And uh, you can, um, so you uh, what we call uh, you neglect the body and give more importance to spirit it is not christian thing we have to focus our body spirit soul and body completely and we should give nourishment with the scripture for our mind and heart and spirit and we need to give nourishment with the food for the physical bodies we cannot neglect us um, of course uh, we have to put ourselves keep ourselves in proper uh, shape that is also or part of our spiritual life because our spiritual life cannot be separated. Okay, body, body thing cannot be separated from spirit. They are together. So going to gym is also a spiritual act. Don't forget that. If you are if you are shaping your body, it is of course I understand. I have my own tummy, and uh, but uh, I, I hope you understand the point I'm making. Anything that related to uh physical thing is not separate from spiritual life that's what i would like to tell you if you're eating uh, food that is a spiritual act if you're uh, doing your job it is spiritual act if you're studying it is a spiritual act uh, if you're spending time with your family it is a spiritual act everything you do is a spiritual act because your spirit and body cannot be separated together only you are alive if you separate you die, you're dead so everything you do is spiritual. So you are a spiritual person. And <laughs> these three aspects of life are equally important and we need to take care of all three. That is the reason if spiritual life is only about the spirit, not about body, what is the point of Jesus raising again from dead physically in a physical body? Bodily resurrection of Jesus makes no sense. Our hope of being our bodily resurrection makes no sense if spiritual life is only spirit. Nothing to do with this. This is only mati. This is only dust. <laughs> no, that, that, that is not Christian understanding. Bodily resurrection uh, of Jesus and uh, our hope of bodily resurrection uh, tells us even strongly 
and that we have to take care of physical thing also and the spiritual life and the salvation cannot be separated for physical body and fear, uh, spirit. It is together we are going to experience. Uh, we are going to attend. Uh, we are going to attend spiritual bodies. If we see First Corinthians fifteen forty four, Apostle Paul writes, "It is thrown a natural natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So overall, what we understand from this is, we are going to experience our salvation with both our spirit and body. It cannot be separated." So that deals with most of the fasting things or whatever, uh, you know, just, uh, you need to, you know, uh, squeeze your body to become strong, uh, punish your body to become strong and all its side helps them. Uh, it helps us to understand them. So Christian spiritual life is an undivided life. You cannot divide between spirit and body and you cannot divide between sacred and secular. On going to church alone is not the spiritual act. Praying alone is not the spiritual act. And reading Bible is not alone the spiritual act. You are going to your office is a spiritual act. Doing your job is a spiritual act. Studying your uh, in school and doing these things are spiritual acts. And the second thing is Christian spiritual life is a participation in the life of God. A lot of things in terms of Christian spiritual life is about reading Bible, uh, praying and these, that, that's where we are focused about having the right doctrine, right teaching, right belief and right practice. You know, I would like to give you an example about a church in the, in the Bible who practiced all these things. They're very good morally. They're very good in obeying the commandments of God. They're very good theologically. Uh, they are very good in ministry. And still... God has something against them. You can find it in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have uh, preserved and have patience. Sorry, you, you have persevered and you have patience. And you have labored for my name's sake and have not become very. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. You might have, you can you might have remembered. It is talking about church at Ephesus. Church at Ephesus is perfect in their practice, and God says the only thing against them that is you have forgotten the first love. What is the first love? Is it the first law means the first, the first days of my uh, my spiritual conversion experience? I'm where I was so very jealous about doing God's things. I, I, we all can relate to it. The, when we when we just, we call it born again experience when we're born again, uh, we must be very uh, aggressive about reading the scripture and praying and uh, doing so much. And now we feel, oh, those days are better and now I'm not able to do much. Uh, so my first love was, there, well, was better. Let me tell you, the first love is not about how we acted when we are, uh, when we are just born again. The first love is the love of God. This is love that God has loved us first, not we. So the first love is God's love. When we relate to God's love, when we receive God's love, we will be able to grow or we'll be able to live the spiritual life because Christian spiritual life is participation in the life of God through love. So you can have all these disciplines, super, your practice may be perfect, but still you cannot be spiritual if you are not able to relate to God's love. And John chapter 17 verse 20 to 23 says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you have, uh, which you gave me, I have, I have given them that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you have, uh, you have loved them as you have loved me. This is a very profound uh, statement, uh, statement actually. This is a prayer of Jesus for all of us. What he wants us is we want to, he wants us to be in him and he in us, we may be able to experience the, uh, the life within God, the life of God, uh, where father loves the son, son loves the father, they love each other in the Holy Spirit. There is a complete union and oneness 
and he wants us to be part of it and he bring that life into us so this is the life that god wants us to have this is the christian spiritual life that we participate in the very life of god and the and that, that that's where we experience oneness between ourselves and god and uh, with our fellow brethren we all may be one that's what god de de desires for us and unfortunately uh, oneness has taken a wrong no, wrong track people say one uh, spiritually we becoming one means becoming uh, experiencing oneness between ourselves and cosmos no oh, this oneness is not between ourselves and cosmos this oneness is ourselves and god it is about participation in the relationship with god through faith and kindly don't misunderstand we christian we participate in the life of god for true truly we participate and it is not an illusion that we create for ourselves in the mind it is not some kind of a higher awareness or experience that we get when we just sit and meditate on god and his word we feel god close to us and it is not about that mystical experience but we participate in the life of god through faith how with the, we when we go and do things we do with the confidence that he is with us he loves us and he will never leave us nor forsake us when when we are tempted to do something wrong we feel uh, god is watching uh, watching uh, watching over us and he would be uh, he 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 won't be comfortable seeing us do this and uh, uh it is not something that aligns with him and i am son of god it is not worth for me to live or do this you know everywhere this assurance comes everywhere this faith that influences our action that is the life we are talking about it is not a higher uh, experience or illusion you don't need to uh, feel jesus everywhere in the empty seats it is not the kind of love life but it is a life of assurance it's not uh, illusions and thirdly and lastly christian spiritual life is inclusive it's not exclusive like the dog people say i <coughs> and my jesus only i'm not interested in the church i'm praying and reading my scripture i'm okay or everywhere it is deception that is not christian uh, spiritual life and if a if a person is truly spiritual and could relate to god and like participate in the life of god he cannot keep himself in the house and uh, he uh, not mingle with the brethren you know there is no uh, no religions have given very good uh, very uh, such a high uh, importance to fellowship as christianity did now church has become some kind of activity sunday worship and service but in the early church it is not that way whether and used to come together whenever they come together that is the church there had that's happening when you, you don't need to have a service when uh, one or two or family for for just gather together you don't need to have a sermon and all but just share your life and experiences you share a food and cup of tea and have a conversation that is nothing but church actually so we cannot keep uh, we cannot participate in the life of god we can keep ourselves back in the home uh, because uh, christian life is not uh, you know exclusive but it, it is inclusive it includes people and for them apostle john writes in first john chapter 4 verse 20 he says if one, someone says i love god and i hate my brother he is a liar for he does not love god, love his uh, sorry for he does not love his brother whom he has seen how can he love god whom he has not seen so if you say i'm spiritual i'm doing all these things i sit at home i don't mingle with anyone then oh you there is something wrong with the spirituality if you say we love god and don't mingle love or mingle if you don't uh, mingle how can we express our love if you don't mingle and love our brethren we are like a son that is not the spiritual life we include all are included in our uh, spiritual life and uh, first john chapter 13 verse 34 to 35 it says a new commandment i give you that you love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another but uh, sorry by this all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another loving others is a major part of christian spiritual life your brother is a major part of your spiritual life our spiritual life is not just i myself and my jesus and my bible it's not that you 
and the people around you all are part of your spiritual life. You cannot separate it. It is completely inclusive. And one last uh, uh, caution we need to bring is the new age movement says that <coughs> love is the gospel, love is the main teaching. And if you have love for people and everything, it is good. And they say love is the principle or principle of life. And let me tell you, when we make love as a principle, it loses its very essence. Making uh, love, making love uh, a principle loses, it makes it as a Love loses its essence if it is made a principle. And love can ex love can exist only in relationships. That is why this principle of love is not truly love. Actually, when we mingle with somebody, when we love them, help them, and do things with them, then only love can exist. Because love can exist between people. It is not a principle. So uh, Christian spirituality cannot be separated. From, uh, from people and all are included in part of spiritual life. Finally, what I would like to say is be assured about your spiritual life. You are spiritual because you are a spirit and you have a relationship with God and you experience that in faith. And there are no degrees of spiritual life. He is more spiritual and I am less spiritual. These things are not there. Okay. And there is no sacred and secular. These divisions are not there. There is no body and there is no spirit. There is no spiritual acts and spirit, secular acts. All are one for us because we cannot separate life from body and spirit. And we are called to experience the joy of being in relationship with God through faith. That is Christian spiritual life. And we complete our spiritual life or we experience the completion of our spiritual life as we love others. This is what Christian spiritual life is. And if you want to uh, know more about the influences of Western and Eastern philosophies in Christianity, uh, feel free to uh, ping me. We can discuss about those. So ultimately, what I would like to tell you, you are spiritual. You are experience, you are in, uh, your spiritual life is experiencing God and uh, receiving and enjoying that love and expressing the same with others. These conclusions and all sound uh, the same to us, but uh, I would like to ask you to think about uh, the, bo the body, why we make we, uh, the reasons behind these conclusions. Those are going to be helpful to you. Thank you very much.